Hey everyone, um, my name is David. I am uh, one of the co-founders, CEO of Adalo. Um, so I'm here to kind of quickly talk to you all about what kind of app uh, should you make. You may be coming here uh, seeing this video as somebody who just thinks that they wanna make an app um, and is excited about that. You might be a business owner um, or you might, uh, you know, have, be a freelancer or an agency or you're an all expert and you're trying to trying to help people pitch uh, app ideas. So this course is all about um, not only just helping yourself understand what kind of apps should you make, but also as a freelancer or an agency, maybe what kind of apps should you be pitching or should you be looking for in your day-to-day -day life to help uh, grow your business. So a little bit of a, of, a, a mixed bag of who you all might be showing up to see this course. Um, or maybe you're just excited about apps in general and you want to learn what apps you can even make. This is a great way of, of thinking about uh, apps and something that I have kind of synthesized after looking at um, literally hundreds of thousands of apps and how what are the big patterns um, that we're seeing kind of all get boiled down into this, uh, into, into what kind of app should you make? All right, so let's get started here. So I would say in general, the big pattern that we see uh, with apps is that today in our day-to-day -day life, um, we all have processes that look like this. You know, it has different people um, that are a part of these processes. Um, you know, it has emails that are kind of getting exchanged or maybe those are text messages or maybe it's a WhatsApp chat or Facebook group, email, whatever you want to say, messages are going back and forth. We have docs. Um, those could be actual like Google docs or Word docs um, or PDFs that are kind of going back and forth. Um, to people in different processes or in different companies or, or physical documents. These could be all also physical things um, that are happening today. There are spreadsheets, uh, again, that are going back and forth or getting filled out or information is getting stored in different uh, spreadsheets or databases. Um, there are forms you're filling out. Maybe you go to uh, a place to fill out a form to you know apply for something. All of those things are kind of going back and forth between a lot of different people. So those are the processes that exist today. All of those processes can and will be in the future turned into custom uh, either web apps or mobile apps. Um, so a lot of those processes we don't even realize that um, are happening here today. Um, and that is kind of the big general pattern that I always look for for what would be a great app would be looking at, and again, these could literally be in local businesses that, that you're seeing, you know, you could be, um, you know, uh, you could have a, have a, a local fitness uh, gym and you could be a, a, a client of that gym and they're sending you a physical spreadsheet. We'll get into some of that stuff, but these are all kind of processes that uh, could be improved by an actual app. So that's like hot, kind of like macro, macro level. Um, I would say these processes happen certainly at work all the time. I have to imagine that all of us at work are like, yep, nodding our heads. Like all those things definitely happen. Um, they definitely happen with businesses that you interact with. Again, some of those things could be like not digital at all. Like you're at an eyeglass place and literally filling out something. So those are back and forth. They could also be in communities that you're a part of. You know, it could be a church where you're filling out, hey, I'm donating or, you know, it could be a community where it's a school or a club that you're a part of that, you know, emails are going back and forth to parents or, I mean, who knows, whatever the, whatever um, that community is of that you're a part of. So they definitely happen across everything, not just work, not just businesses, but all of our lives, you know, have these types of processes that are happening. So I do want to point out that I think there are some key characteristics though. Um, the more of these four things that, uh, that, happen, the more uh, likelihood that an app is a better thing than just, you know, I'm not saying that like email should go away or, or text messages, certainly things like uh, uh, that will still exist in that way. But if they involve these four things, there's a higher likelihood that you actually should make a custom app for it. So if it involves multiple people with different roles, you know, is, is an important thing um, that again, communication in an app, that's like part of the key thing of an app is that I'm logged in and I see my information and someone else is logged in and they see their information. So the different roles aspects is important. You might see, uh, you know, might, you might have a different view. You can think about that as again, um, if you are a business owner, you probably have a different view than the clients that are part of your business. So those are two different roles, or maybe you have employees that have a third role or a store manager and they have a different role. Um, 
Another key characteristic is that um, they kind of act as a bridge between internal and external um, processes. So especially for businesses, um, you might have you know some internal workflows that you're doing, and if that also interacts in an external way, um, again, that gets to that different role aspect. That is another kind of key thing to look for. Um, another important thing is that if it occurs uh, frequently, um, and over a long period of time. So I guess I'm saying frequently as in like, it doesn't literally have to happen daily, but um, you know, if this is a process that's recurring, um, you know, either on a monthly basis or a weekly basis, um, if it's just a, a quick process that you have, you know, one time, or maybe that project is like literally just gonna be a week long, like, you know what, it doesn't make sense to make an app for that. It's probably just better to use docs and spreadsheets. That, that process is just one off. It's a simple spreadsheet that I'm making. Um, for, you know, for this project that I'm literally doing this week and I'm going to toss it aside and, and never use that process again. But if this is something that is happening literally, you know, every single week for months and months on end and it involves multiple people and it's internal, external, you're starting to get to this like ding, 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 like, wait a second, like, why don't we make a custom app for these things? And again, it all goes back to probably involves some sort of combination of, either non-digital or digital forms of emails, spreadsheets, or docs. Okay, so here is the kind of overall characteristics and patterns that we're seeing. Now let's get into really solid detail so I can back up what these things mean with actual real world examples because we're still kind of not really being super tangible in our descriptions here. So there are three case studies I'm gonna go through. So the first is custom uh, workouts for a pro fitness. Um, it was a business called Lifetime Performance. Um, they had really, really high-end um, professional uh, golf pros and tennis pros all around the nation and the world. Um, and, uh, you know, previously, um, you know, in that, that process, before an app, you know, they have trainers and athletes are a general setup that they have. So, again, checking the box of different roles. So, we have a trainer, we have an athlete. What was the process like before? Well, before the trainer would say, okay, I've got to send this workout to this person. I gotta make a list of exercises. So they would go into their database, they would look at the different, tons of different workout exercise, specific exercise they would have. They would start saying, okay, you're gonna do this many reps and this many things. And then they even had to attach, you know, um, hey, well, here's like a video of how you actually do that thing because like I might not know what that specific, or it might be a brand new thing that they're explaining or I wanna remind them of some helpful tips of like, you know, make sure you have your form in this way. So. It was a list of exercises. They even have docs for specific details around those exercises, videos, those types of things. That's what I mean by a doc. It was you know videos they had. So um, then they would email that workout to the athlete. The athlete would get that workout. They might be traveling all over the nation at this point, or maybe they're in their they're just kind of in their going to the gym at an off hours, you know, not getting a personal session, but still being there. And then next, that athlete would then view the workout. They would view exercise number one in the doc and they maybe go back to the workout. They're doing this on their phone, but it's like a spreadsheet or maybe it's a physical piece of paper, but then they can't really view like what are the, like, the tips and tricks for that thing. Um, and then afterwards, they would email their workout uh, you know, feedback. Hey, like this was a great workout or like, you know what? This was just like, it didn't really work for me here. Like I didn't really know what I was doing with that specific, like I didn't know how to do that exercise, but it was already over at that point um, or you know, it was included with lots of different things. So feedback happened or, or maybe the trainer forgot about that feedback later on. It wasn't really kind of, it was just left in, in email. So these things are now all over the place. You're seeing this literally play out as like sheet, doc, email, back and forth, different types of people. And then what you know we were able to do was basically make, okay, you have a view for, you have an app for the, the trainers and they would see all their clients. They would be able to make the workouts, the different circuits, sets, all those types of things. The athlete would then be able to see what their day was. They would be able to dive in, watch the videos. They'd be able to, to chat with them live, see the exercises all there in one place. So it saved time because um, they didn't have to be as repetitive. They could actually copy and, and clone workouts, those types of things. Um, it was a better experience for the athlete as well as they were actually able to like literally see things in real time and much better view of what it was instead of actually looking at it in a, in a spreadsheet where you're pinching and zooming as you're in a workout. So great example of exactly what we talk about those patterns that we were seeing in a real world example. Okay, number two, 
was for um, a university. They have a degree certification tracking program. We have to give different points around campus for different events that you go to. Um, that was the high level. And you have to take different specific classes. So in this, they have a program admin. That's the person um, who is actually setting up, hey, here are the events that you can go to. They had students that were participating in this. And they also had a program director who would approve things or approve points, making sure the student actually got this. So what was the process like before? Well, they had actually had to have their program admin who would then literally the first thing they would do would email all the students and be like, hey, there's a brand new event that's upcoming. Go to this talk by this person and get this many points as a way for you to be on track for your certification. The students would then go to the event. They would email them the program admin. I went to this event. That program admin would then go to a doc and they would view whatever picture was taken or like whatever proved that they went to it. And then they would add points to the file in their spreadsheet. That was, this is how many points you have. They would then email that back to the student. You did it, congratulations. And they would also email it to the program director so they would confirm, okay, great, you did that thing. Now we have proof that you did all this. So very back and forth. You could imagine then also like a student at some point was like, well, wait a second, how many points do I have? Or where am I supposed to go? And it's all over the place. So that made it not great when the program admin would have to go check, where are they? Are they on track? Are they not on track? What's happening? So it didn't lead to a great experience. But then what we did was basically say, okay, you can now see the events. I can see how many points I have total. I can see how many pending points I have because I went to that event. So I need to submit something to prove that I went to that event. I could then submit, hey, I went to this thing, approve, reject. All that happened in the two different apps, the admin app and the uh, student app. Again, it literally took spreadsheets, emails, docs, back and forth, all this kind of stuff in a much better experience. It was also, uh, again, awesome for the students. They would see who would go to different events. So they would be like, oh, Jake's going to that event. I would like to go with Jake. So you could go to the things. They kind of had a little point system where you start gamifying it and you see how many people points have and it becomes a little bit of a race to get more points. So these things all actually add up to be a better experience for the whole program by making a very simple app for them. So um, finally, this is more for like an internal process that was happening at a company. So um, there was, uh, the two different roles was somebody presenting feedback and then the other one was teammates. So, um, the way this worked previously, um, before Adalo was that there was uh, an actual form that the uh, teammate would fill out and say, Hey, this is the feedback that I have for you that was collected in a sheet. Then that sheet would get, uh, back to the presenter and then they would view the feedback for that sheet. They would look at the doc to respond back. They would then email that person. Hey, this is how this works. The teammate would then see that. They would be able to view the sheet very back and forth, kind of manual all over the place. Not everyone's being able to see it. And then it was turned into a really simple app where um, there were different uh, ways for you to set up different topics to get feedback for. You could also create issues for those topics um, and combine things together, um, which automated a lot of the process um, and put it all in one place. And it ended up being a much better experience instead of that back and forth. Um, you also can set up automations. So that's another powerful thing with, with, uh, with apps is you can also connect to different uh, software that that had. So when feedback was complete, it could get triggered into Slack notifications and those types of things that again, wasn't really possible in just a classic spreadsheet form to do a bunch of those more automated things. So it uh, all in all, you can see a pattern we're seeing here is that it saves people time a lot of the time, you know, it saved back and forth time for uh, that school program of people checking where they were. It saved time for the gym trainers because they could you know, clone workouts. It saved time for the people presenting for feedback because they could combine things together and respond at once. It created better experiences um, than what it was. And it actually helped people stay a lot more connected. In all of those examples, it was a much more connected uh, experience actually having a custom app, uh, custom software built for those cases. So again, now you're starting to see this like macro level pattern. And as soon as you recognize this in your in your day-to-day -day life, 
of, of emails and spreadsheets and back and forth. And again, those, those things might be digital or non-digital forms that are happening. You know, maybe you're actually calling or texting somebody like that's the form of communication. It's not, it's not an actual quote unquote email, but when you're seeing those things more and more in your daily life, um, you can start, uh, immediately saying, wait a second, this should be a custom app. And if you're a freelancer agency, you could pitch that to that business. Um, and it'll really save them time and better experience. Um, if you are, you know, a, a part of a community and you want to make an app for that community, or if you are, you know, an aspiring entrepreneur, these are great things to be on the lookout for, um, that you actually could make, uh, you know, a startup app for, you know, your local community or a much larger startup, um, that you're looking for as well. So I would always be kind of looking for these patterns as you're thinking about what apps, uh, to make. If you're looking for more, uh, amazing examples, definitely go check out Adalo Showcase, They'll start giving you things you can think about what was it like beforehand for in terms of, you know, a spreadsheet app docs, what did it, what it was it probably like before that, what, what are these apps doing today um, that are replacing those things. So, um, you know, there's lots of videos and links and download stuff there. So definitely go check it out and thanks for listening.